the FA Oral Questions, General. Welcome to Professor Jen's practice for the FA General Oral Exam. Before we begin, a few recommendations. One, try to verbally answer these questions. Doing so will plant an auditory anchor in your head so you associate the question with the answer. Two, repetition is important. I recommend you repeat these as often as possible. You can listen to this on your way to work, to school, or whenever you have the free time. Three, ask questions in a comment if you don't understand why a particular answer is the answer. For some of the questions, I gave in detail why an answer is the answer, but for others, I left it as is. If you don't understand something, don't be afraid to ask. And four, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, let's get started. First section, basic electricity. Question number one, what is the most important law applicable to the study of electricity? The answer is Ohm's law, E is equal to IR. Number two, what are the elements of Ohm's law? The answer is E is equal to IR. E in this formula is the voltage, also known as the electromotive force. I is the current or the intensity or the flow of electrons. And R, of course, is the resistance. Number three, what are the sources that produce electrical energy? There are actually five sources that produce electrical energy. You'll deem me what sometimes asks for three or four, but it's important to know all five, just in case. The first one is chemical, like a lead acid battery. The second is thermal, like in a thermocouple. The third is pressure, like a transducer. The fourth is light, like solar panels. And the final one is magnetic like generators and alternators, inducing current. Number four, what does an electrical circuit consist of? An electrical circuit actually consists of three components. One, a power source, like a battery. Two, a conductor, like your wires. And three, a load or resistance light bulb, heater, what have you. Number five, what device represents the capacitance in an AC circuit? The answer is a capacitor, also known as a condenser. Number six, what is the function of a capacitor? A capacitor is a device that stores electrical energy in an electric field. Number seven, what are the units for capacitance? The answer is a ferret. Number eight, what are the units for frequency? The answer is Hertz. Number nine, what is the name of the component that allows current to flow in only one direction? The answer is a diode. Number 10, what is inductance? The answer, inductance is the tendency of an electrical conductor like a coil to oppose any change of electrical current flowing through it. According to Lenz's law, when voltage is induced in a coil in an AC circuit, the resulting current produces a magnetic field around that coil. 
that magnetic field produces its own voltage, or EMF, that will oppose any changes of current flow. Number 11. What is the inductor in a magneto? The answer? The inductor in a magneto, like most circuits, is the coil. Number 12. What is impedance? The answer? Impedance is the total opposition of current flow in an AC circuit. It is a combined effect of three things that oppose current flow. One, resistance, caused by the resistors. Two, inductive reactants, caused by the coils. And three, capacitive reactants, caused by the capacitors. Number 13, what causes opposition to the flow of current in an AC circuit? One, resistance. Two, inductive reactants. And three, capacitive reactants. Number 14, what is the unit of measurement for impedance? The answer is ohms. Number 15, what is the general purpose of a resistor? The answer, the job of resistor is to limit or regulate the flow of current. Number 16, how may the value of a small fixed resistor be determined? The answer is, you can tell the approximate value of a small fixed resistor by its color band painted on the resistor. Number 17. What are two things that happen when current flows through a conductor? One, the conductor generates heat. And two, a magnetic field is generated. Number 18. What is the common name of the lines of force that make up a field surrounding a magnet? They're called lines of magnetic flux. Number 19. What is the concept that describes the relationship between electricity and magnetism? The answer is electromagnetism. Number 20. What are the four factors that affect the resistance of an electrical conductor? There are a few factors that would affect the resistance of electrical conductor. The first one is the type of material it's made out of. Different materials have different amounts of free-flowing electrons. This is actually the most important factor. The second is the length of wire. The resistance of the wire is directly proportional to its length. The longer the wire, the greater the resistance. The third is the cross-sectional area of the wire. The resistance of the wire is inversely proportionate to the cross-sectional area. Pretty much, the thicker the wire, the lower the resistance. And the final one is temperature. Generally speaking, for most materials, as temperature increases, its resistance will also increase. There are a few exceptions, like carbon. Number 21. What is the unit of measurement of power in a DC circuit? The unit of power is the watt. Number 22, what is a kilowatt? A kilowatt is a thousand watts. Number 23, in a DC circuit, what occurs when voltage is increased while resistance remains constant? The answer is, current will also increase. 
Number 24. What are the three types of DC electrical circuits? The three types are series circuit, parallel circuits, and complex circuits, also known as series parallel. Number 25. A 24-volt lead-acid battery has how many cells? The answer is 12 cells. Each cell is rated about 2 volts. 24 divided by 2, 12 cells. Number 26. What are the units that battery capacities are measured in? The answer is ampere hours. Number 27. What should be the specific gravity of the electrolyte in a fully charged lead acid battery? The answer is between 1.275 and 1.3. Number 28. What instrument is used to determine the specific gravity of the electrolyte of a lead acid battery? The answer is a hydrometer. If you remember, a hydrometer is a device that measures the specific gravity of liquids and is thus used to measure the specific gravity of the electrolytes of lead acid batteries. Number 29. Why can a hydrometer not be used to determine the charge of a nickel cadmium battery? The answer is because there is no applicable change in the specific gravity of a nickel cadmium battery between charge and discharge. The specific gravity of a nickel cadmium battery doesn't change much between charged and discharged. It remains around 1.24 and 1.3. Because of this, it is impossible to use the hydrometer in order to check to see if it is charged or discharged. Number 30. When using a hydrometer to check the charge of a lead acid battery, at what temperature must the correction factor be applied to the reading? The answer is, adjustments must be made if the temperature of the electrolyte is below 70 degrees Fahrenheit or above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Number 31. What is electromagnetic induction? Electromagnetic induction is the use of magnetic fields to produce a current or the use of current to produce electromagnetic fields. It has two principles. One, when you pass a conductor, like a wire, through a magnetic field or a magnetic field over a wire, you produce current going through that wire. The second is when you have current going through a wire, it produces a magnetic field around it. Those two principles explain electromagnetic induction. Number 32, how are battery compartments protected against corrosion? They are usually coated with a special corrosion resistant paint, such as bituminous paint. Number 33. What should the correct electrolyte level in a properly serviced battery be? The answer is, it should be approximately 3 eighths of an inch above the plates. However, if a battery has baffle plates above the cell plates, then the electrolyte level should be up to the hole in the baffle plates in each cell. Number 34. What are paralleling generators and how is the load distributed? Paralleling generators is when you connect two or more generators in parallel to the load to supply extra power. The load must be distributed equally across all generators. Number 35. Describe a no-trip or trip-free circuit breaker. A trip-free circuit breaker will automatically open in the presence of excessive current and cannot be overridden by holding it in the closed position. Number 36. 
Can you store nickel cadmium and lead acid batteries together? The answer is no. The fumes from lead acid batteries can contaminate the electrolyte in the nickel cadmium batteries. Number 37. What is the result of an imbalanced cell in a nickel cadmium battery? The answer is, during the charging of the battery, the cell's low internal resistance will cause current to increase. This increase in current will cause excessive temperatures, which will lead to premature failure. This is something called thermal runaway. And number 38, what happens to the specific gravity of the electrolyte in a lead acid battery when the temperature changes? And the answer is, the specific gravity readings will vary with temperature. As the temperature of electrolyte increases, the specific gravity readings will increase. As the temperature decreases, the readings will also decrease. Section 2. Aircraft Drawings Question number 1. What type of lines are used in aircraft drawings to indicate hidden views, center lines, and alternate positions? The answer is hidden view lines, which are medium width lines made up of short dashes, center lines, which are thin lines composed of alternating long and short dashes, and alternate position lines, which are medium width lines composed of one long and two short evenly spaced dashes. Number two, how are dimension lines shown on aircraft drawings? The answer. Dimension lines are solid and usually broken at midpoint for insertion of measurement indications, like so. Question number three, what is a sketch for repair? The answer, a sketch is a basic drawing that shows specific information and provides minimum detail needed to manufacture a part. Question number four, how may an aircraft drawing of a part be drawn to bring out pertinent details? The answer is by drawing a detailed view at a larger scale than the principal view. Question number five. What type of drawing is most helpful in troubleshooting a system? The answer is a schematic. Question number six. Define tolerance as used in aircraft drawings. A tolerance is an allowable variation of dimensions. It's a dimension plus or minus a certain number. For example, 10 plus or minus 2 means it could go as high as 12 and as low as 8. Question number seven, define clearance as used in aircraft drawings. A clearance is the space in between two parts. Question number eight, what is a fuselage station number? The answer? A fuselage station number is a numbering system used on large aircraft to locate stations such as fuselage frames. A station number represents a distance from the datum along its longitudinal axis. For example, a station number of 200 means that that object is 200 inches from the datum. Number 9. What information is given in the title block of a blueprint? The title block is a means of identification for a blueprint. It contains at least the following eight things. One, the drawing number. Two, the name of the part or assembly. Three, the drawing scale. Four, the date. Five, the name of the firm. Six, 
the name of the draftsman, 7, the checker, and 8, the approving official. Number 10. Where is the title block usually found on an aircraft drawing? The answer is in the lower right corner. Number 11. Why are dimensions used and how are they shown on aircraft drawings? The answer is Dimensions are shown as solid, narrow lines broken at midpoint for the insertion of a number that indicates the size of the object. Number 12. How can a change to an aircraft drawing be identified? The answer is by its revision letter. The revision letters are usually listed in a table next to the title block on the corner of the drawing. Number 13. What is the bill of materials associated with the aircraft blueprint? The bill of materials is a list of materials and parts necessary to fabricate or assemble the component or system. Number 13. What is the bill of materials associated with an aircraft blueprint? The bill of materials is a list of materials and parts necessary to fabricate or assemble a component or a system. Number 14. Why are symbols used when drawing aircraft blueprints? The answer is, symbols are used as a shorthand in drawings. They express the characteristics of a component with the minimal amount of drawing or writing. Number 15. What is an orthographic projection? An orthographic projection is a way of illustrating an object in a drawing by showing different views at right angles from each other, like front view, side view, and top view. Number 16. How many views are required to determine the shape of an object? The answer is three views, like front, top, and right side. And number 17, what is the purpose of one view drawings? One view drawings are used for objects of uniform thickness, such as gaskets, shims, and plates. Section three, weight and balance. Question number one. What is a datum and what is its purpose when making weight and balance computations? The answer is, a datum is an imaginary vertical line or plane from which all horizontal measurements are taken. It is used as a reference point to determine the location of items along its longitudinal axis. Question number two. What items concerning weight and balance can be found in the type certificate data sheet? So, there are a few things necessary for weight and balance that can be found in the aircraft's TCDS. They are the data's location, the CG limits, maximum weights, leveling means, seat locations, baggage capacity, fuel and oil locations and capacity, and engine horsepower. Number three, what is the purpose of weight and balance control? The answer is, weight and balance is important for the safety and efficiency of the aircraft in flight. Number four, when computing weight and balance, what is the moment and how is it obtained? The moment is a force that tends to rotate the aircraft about its axis. 
is obtained by multiplying the weight of an object by its arm. Moment is equal weight times arm. Question number five. How would a negative moment be obtained forward of the datum? The answer is by adding weight. To explain this, you already know that moment is equal to weight times arm. The arm is the distance from the datum. Everything forward of the datum is negative. Everything aft of the datum is positive. The question says that it needs to be forward of the datum. So the arm is negative. In order for the moment to be negative as well, the weight has to be positive. A negative arm times a positive weight is equal to a negative moment. A positive weight means you add weight. A negative weight means you remove weight. Question number six. What is the arm of an item and how is it obtained? The answer is, the arm is the distance in inches from the datum. The arm can be obtained by either measuring it or it can be found in the aircraft's weight and balance records. Number seven, what is tier weight and how is it handled when making weight and balance calculations? The answer is, tear weight is the weight of the chocks, blocks, and jacks. Tear weight must be subtracted from the scale readings in order to obtain the true empty weight of the aircraft. When putting the aircraft on a scale, you have to chalk the aircraft to prevent it from rolling off. Since chocks, blocks, and jacks are not part of the aircraft itself, you have to subtract the weight from the actual scale reading. Question number eight, what is meant by minimum fuel? And how is it calculated for weight and balance? The answer is, minimum fuel is the amount of fuel needed to run the engines at max power for half hour. It is used to determine the amount of fuel needed for an adverse load check. Now, for reciprocating engines, minimum fuel can be calculated by dividing the meter by two. For aircraft with turbo engines, minimum fuel has to be given to you. Number nine, what is meant by residual fuel? Residual fuel or unusable fuel, or sometimes called undrainable fuel, is the fuel that can't be drained or used for flight. It is a fuel remaining in the tanks, sumps, and lines. It is part of the aircraft's empty weight. Number 10, what is meant by the center of gravity range? The center of gravity range is the distance in inches from the most forward acceptable center of gravity limit to the most rearward acceptable center of gravity limit. Number 11, what is an aircraft loading graph? The answer is a method of determining load distribution so that the aircraft remains within its operating CG range. Number 12, how would you determine the empty weight and empty weight CG of an aircraft if all weight and balance records are missing? If weight imbalance records are missing or destroyed, the aircraft must be reweighed and the weight imbalance paperwork recreated. Number 13. What is the difference between fixed wing and rotor wing or helicopter aircraft CG ranges? The CG range for helicopters are much more critical than fixed wing aircrafts. Center of gravity must be calculated longitudinally as well as laterally. And the CG range for rotor wing aircrafts are usually less than three inches. Number 14, when weighing an aircraft to determine empty weight center of gravity, what must you do with regard to the fixed equipment which is normally carried in the aircraft? The answer is, it is included in the empty weight.
Number 15. Why do manufacturers specify an empty CG even though the aircraft is not operating at this empty weight? The answer is, when the empty weight CG falls within the empty weight CG range, you don't need to perform a weight imbalance check as long as standard loading and seating arrangements are used. Number 16. Why must the aircraft's category be considered when computing weight imbalance? The answer is, if an aircraft is certified under more than one category, the aircraft can have a different maximum allowable gross weight depending on which category the aircraft is operating in for that flight. Number 17. Where is the center of gravity located in relation to the aerodynamic center of lift for most airplanes? The answer is, the center of gravity for most airplanes are located forward of the center of lift. Number 18. What are two common ways of representing the center of gravity of an aircraft? The answer is 1. In inches from the datum and 2. In percent of the mean aerodynamic cord or percent MAC. Number 19. Is there a federal regulation that requires the regular reweighing of private aircrafts? The answer is no. Number 20. Where must a record of the most recent empty weight and center of gravity be kept? The answer is, it should be maintained with the aircraft's flight manual or weight and balance records. Number 21. What should be done in regards to the aircraft's fuel when performing a weight and balance check if draining is not an option? Aircraft should be weighed with unusable fuel, so the weight of the usable fuel can be mathematically subtracted from the aircraft's weight in the weight imbalance calculations. Number 22. How should aircraft fuel be drained for weight imbalance? First, level the aircraft in accordance with the TCDS, and then drain the fuel until empty. What should be left is the unusable, or sometimes known as undrainable fuel. Number 23. What is the ballast? A ballast is essentially a counterweight used to bring an aircraft into CG range. It can be sandbags, lead bars, metal plates, etc. Number 24. If the forward CG limit of an aircraft is exceeded after installing several items in the engine compartment, how could the limit be returned to limits without removing or changing any of the newly installed equipment? The answer is by adding a ballast in the rear of the aircraft. If the CG is too far forward, you can shift the CG aft by adding a ballast in the back of the aircraft. Number 25. What are the placard requirements for a ballast? The answer is, the ballast location must have a placard stating any limitations on contents, including weight, that are necessary under the loading requirements. Number 26. What is recommended for marking of a permanent ballast? A permanent ballast should be marked with big red letters, stating permanent ballast, do not remove. Number 27. How should an aircraft be leveled for weighing for weight and balance? It should be leveled per the requirements in the aircraft's type specific data sheet or aircraft specifications. Number 28. Name one common method of leveling an aircraft during weight and balance.
The answer is, you can use a spirit level. Number 29. Describe a plumb bob and its use. The answer is, a plumb bob is a heavy cone-shaped object attached to a string. It's used to determine a spot directly below the point the tool is hanging from. And number 30. How can you determine if a part will affect the CG without weighing the aircraft? And the answer is, as long as the weight and balance records are up to date, you can use basic computations to determine what effect the object would have on the aircraft CG. Section 4. Fluid Lines and Fittings Number 1. What are aircraft plumbing lines usually made of? The answer is metal tubing or flexible hoses and fittings. Number 2. How is metal tubing sized? The answer is by outside diameter and wall thickness. Number 3. What material should be selected for a high pressure rigid fluid lines? The answer is annealed of one fourth hard corrosion resistant steel. Number four, what type of material should fittings be made of when used with stainless steel tubing? The answer is stainless steel. Number five, what percentage of flattening is allowed when bending metal tubing? The answer is 25% maximum. It must maintain at least 75% of the original tube's diameter. Number six, what precautions should be taken when routing fluid lines adjacent to electrical wiring? The answer is one, fluid lines must be routed at least six inches below any electrical wiring whenever possible. Two, Fluid lines and electrical wiring should never be closer than half inch. And three, both wiring and fluid lines should be fastened to the aircraft structure by clamps or other methods that will maintain the separation. Number seven, what is the purpose of the identification stripe running along the length of a flexible hose? So that stripe on the hose is called a ley line. Ley lines are used to tell if a hose has been twisted during installation, and twists are not permitted. Number 8. What are some synthetic materials commonly used to manufacture flexible hoses? The answer is Buna N, Neoprene, Butyl, ethylene propylene diene rubber, and Teflon. Number nine, how are standard AN type and AC type fluid lines and fittings identified? The answer is, AN fluid line fittings are colored blue or black. They have coarser threads and a small shoulder between the threads and the 37 degree flare cone. AC type fittings are usually gray or yellow. They have finer threads that are threaded all the way to the 35 degree flare cone. Number 10. What is the purpose of using quick disconnect couplings in fluid systems? So, Quick disconnect coupling halves are spring-loaded closed when disconnected from each other. It provides a means of quickly disconnecting a line without any loss of fluids or air entering the system. They are usually installed in locations where frequent uncoupling of lines are required for inspection or maintenance. Number 11. How are flexible holes sized? The answer is by the inside diameter in 1 16th of an inch increments. 
Number 12. How much slack must be left in the flex boot holes during insulation? The answer is 5 to 8 percent of the total hose length must be allowed for freedom of movement under pressure. Number 13. How often should flexible hoses be clamped in place? The answer is every 24 inches. Number 14. Name some considerations taken when installing flexible hose assemblies. The answers are slack, flexing, twisting, bending, clearance, and clamps. Number 15. What pressure is used to proof test a flexible hose assembly? The answer is typically 1.5 times the recommended operating pressure of that hose. Number 16. What are the three parts of military standard MS tube fittings? The answer is the body, the sleeve, and the nut. Number 17. What will be the result of over tightening a flareless tube fitting? The answer is, the compression sleeve's cutting edge will cut too deep into the tube and cause the tube to be weakened. Number 18. What are the two kinds of flares used in aircraft plumbing systems? The answer is, single flares and double flares. Number 19. What is the difference between automotive and aviation flares? The answer is, automotive flares are 45 degrees, aviation flares are usually 37 degrees. Number 20. What is the advantage of flexible Teflon hoses over rubber hoses? The answer is, Teflon hoses have better chemical resistance and higher strength properties at higher temperatures. Number 21. What precautions should be taken when deburring and inspecting the flared end of a tube? The answer is, care should be taken that the tubing is not cracked or that the wall thickness is not reduced by the deburring process. Number 22, what type of rubber is used in flexible lines that carry phosphate ester hydraulic fluid? The answer is synthetic. And number 23, what type of information is on the hose lay line? Information found on the lay line will include one, the type of hose, and two, the quarter and year of manufacture. Section number five, materials and processes. Question number one. What is a suitable non-destructive testing method for detecting surface cracks on aluminum casting forgings? The answer is, dye penetrant inspection can be used. Question number two. List the steps in a dye penetrant inspection. The steps are as follow. One, thoroughly clean the material surface. Two, apply the penetrant for the specified dwell time. Three, rinse off the penetrant with water or emulsifying cleaner. Four, dry the part. Five, apply to the developer. And six, inspect the results. Question number three. Describe the procedure for performing a magnetic particle inspection.
The procedure is as follow. One, thoroughly clean the part and ensure that it is made of a ferrous material. Two, magnetize the part one way, either longitudinally or circularly. Three, apply the ferromagnetic particles, either a dry powder or a suspended in liquid. Four, inspect the part. And five, demagnetize and repeat for magnetization in the second way, either circularly or longitudinally. Number four, what are two types of self-locking nuts? The answer is one, the all metal type, and two, the fiber lock type. Number five, what is the general rule for using self-locking nuts? The answer is, do not use self-locking nuts at joints which are subject to rotation. Number six, what type of cable is used in primary control systems? The answer is extra flexible, which is a seven by 19 cable. Question number seven, how can correct grip length of a bolt be determined? So, grip length is the unthreaded portion of the bolt's shank. It is equal to the total thickness of the material being joined. Number eight, the length of A and standard bolts are measured in what fraction? The answer is in eighths of an inch. Number nine, what does the triangle mean on the head of a steel bolt? The triangle indicates that is a close tolerance bolt. Number 10, what numbers are used for close tolerance bolts? So the answer is AN-173 through AN-186 for hex head bolts and NAS-80 through NAS-86 for countersunk. Number 11. What is the difference between a standard bolt and a close tolerance bolt? A close tolerance bolt is machined to more precise dimensions and is used in high performance applications. Number 12. A solid rivet's diameter is usually measured in what fraction? The answer is in 1 seconds of an inch. Number 13. Describe a rivet nut. The answer is a rivet nut is an internally threaded tubular body that is riveted to the aircraft structure. Number 14, what is the purpose of a channel nut and nut plate? The answer is, both nuts allow a screw or a bolt to be installed without needing to hold the nut with a wrench. Number 15, what are common materials for cotter pins to be made of? The answer is stainless steel or low carbon steel. Number 16, what is the smallest cable that can be used in primary control systems? The answer is cables that are one eighth of an inch in diameter. Number 17, what should be the depth of penetration when making a fillet weld? The answer is, penetration should be 25 to 50% of the thickness of the base metal. Number 18, what precision measuring instruments are used to measure outside dimensions?
The answers are outside micrometers and veneer calipers. Number 19. What term describes a metal that is based on iron? The answer is a ferrous alloy. A little background. The symbol for iron on the periodic table is Fe. That is shorthand for ferrum, which is Latin for iron. So ferrous is Latin for containing iron. So all metals like steel containing iron is a ferrous metal. Number 20. What should be the width of the weld bead and the depth of penetration when making a butt weld? The answer is, the bead width should be three to five times the thickness of the base metal and there should be 100% penetration. Number 21. What system is used in identifying AN type aircraft bolts? The answer is, aircraft bolts have code markings on the bolt head for identification. Bolt diameter is measured in 1 16th of an inch and length is measured in 1 8th of an inch increments. Number 22. What is the difference between a close tolerance and a regular AN bolt? The answer is, close tolerance bolts are used in applications where the bolted joint is subject to severe vibration and load reversals. Also, close tolerance bolts are machined to more precise standards. They must be driven into position only when struck with a 12 to 14 ounce hammer. Number 23. What are the steps for solution heat treating aluminum alloy? The answer is, the alloy must be heated to a predetermined temperature, heat soaked for a specified period of time, and then rapidly quenched to a relatively low temperature. Number 24. In what state is aluminum alloy immediately after solution heat treating and quenching? The answer is, it will be in a relatively soft state, so the material must be naturally aged or precipitation hardened. Number 25. What is done to prevent certain aluminum alloy rivets, D and double D, from becoming hard after heat treating and quenching? The answer is, the rivets are stored in a freezer at a temperature lower than 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The rivets will remain soft for several days. These are called icebox rivets. Number 26. What do rivet head markings indicate? Rivet head markings indicate the alloy of the rivet. Number 27. Why is alloy steel that is responsive to heat treatment usually less suitable for welding? The answer is because of its tendency to become brittle and lose its ductility in areas of the weld. Number 28. Why should steel be normalized after welding or machining? Steel should be normalized to remove internal stress of the metal, thereby reducing its brittleness. Number 29. What are two methods of case hardening? The answer is carburizing and nitrating. Number 30. What are the characteristics of a cold weld? A cold weld has improper penetration, cold lapse caused by insufficient heat, it appears rough and irregular, and its edges are not feathered into the base metal. Number 31. What tools are used to measure the outside dimensions of shafts, thickness of sheet metal stock, diameter of drills, and many other similar applications? The 
the answers are an outside micrometer or veneer caliper. Number 32. What should be used to make a visual inspection of a weld? The answer, a magnifying glass of at least 10 power. And number 33, name some types of non-destructive testing used on non-ferrous materials. There are actually six. They are eddy current, dye penetrant, x-ray, visual inspection, coin tap test, but sometimes just called a tap test, and ultrasonic. Section 6, Ground Operation and Servicing. Question number 1. What is the procedure for extinguishing an induction system fire that occurs during starting of a reciprocating aircraft engine? The answer is... Continue cranking the engine to try to draw the fire into the cylinders. If cranking the engine does not work, then extinguish the fire with a CO2 fire extinguisher. Number two, what is the purpose of pulling a propeller through by hand for two or three revolutions prior to starting a radial or inverted engine? The answer is to check for hydraulic lock. Any liquid present in the cylinder will be indicated by a normal effort required to turn the propeller or if the propeller stops abruptly during rotation. Number three, what damage is most likely to occur if excessive force is exerted on the crankshaft when there is liquid lock slash hydraulic lock? The answer is, the force can bend or break a connecting rod or permanently damage a cylinder. Number four, what information must be located on or near fuel filler openings and oil filler openings? Four, fuel filler openings, the word fuel and the minimum fuel grade or designation for the engine. For all your filler openings, the word oil needs to be marked at or near the filler cap. Number five, why must aircraft and fuel trucks be grounded together with the grounding cable? The answer is to eliminate the buildup of static electricity that could result in an explosion. Number six, Describe the system used to designate the performance rating of aviation gasoline. For fuel grades below 100, octane numbers are used. For fuel grades above 100, the numbers represent the performance rating of the fuel compared to 100% iso octane. A little background on this. Aviation gasoline is formulated to burn smoothly without detonating or knocking. Fuels are numerically graded according to their ability to resist detonation. The higher the number, the more the fuel can be compressed by the pistons without detonating. The octane rating, mentioned before, compares the fuel to a mixture of iso-octane. Grade 80 fuel means it has the anti-knock capabilities of 80% iso-octane, the other 20% being heptane. 100 grade fuel would have the anti-knock capabilities of 100% pure iso-octane and thus can be compressed more to get more power out of it without detonating. When the number exceeds 100, it means that it will perform much better than 100% iso-octane. For example, 130 means it has the performance of 130% that of pure 100% iso-octane. Number 7. What would be the result of operating an aircraft reciprocating engine using a lower grade of avgas than that specified for the engine? The answer is, there would be a loss of engine power, efficiency, and it could lead to detonation. Number 8. 
What color is low lead 100 or 100 LL dyed? The answer is blue. By the way, 80 is dyed red and 100 is dyed green. Just in case your DME asks you that question instead. Number nine, what are the functions of tetraethyl lead in Avgas? The answer is, it is used to reduce detonation as well as to lubricate. Number 10, why should an aviation mechanic know the meaning of standard light signals which are used by control tower operations? The answer is, in case radio communication is not possible, the light signals may be used for taxi control when an aircraft must be taxied to another part of the airport. Number 11. What knot is typically used when securing the airplane with the rope? The answer is anti-slip knot, such as a bowline knot or a square knot. Number 12. Which publication lists the standard FAA hand signals a taxi signalman should use? The answer is the FAA Airman's Information Manual, or AIM. Number 13. What is the result of mixing aviation gasoline with jet fuel in a turbine engine? The answer is when aviation gasoline is mixed with jet fuel, the tetraethyl lead in the gasoline will form deposits on a turbine blades and veins. Continued use of the mixed fuel may lead to a loss in engine efficiency. However, there will be no detrimental effects on the engine if such a usage is on a limited basis. Number 14. What may result if aviation gasoline that is contaminated with jet fuel is used in a reciprocating engine? The answer is, gasoline which is contaminated with jet fuel is unsafe for the use of reciprocating engines and will result in complete engine failure. Number 15. When towing a large aircraft with a tow tractor, what brakes should be used to stop the aircraft? When towing an aircraft, always apply the tractor brakes not the aircraft brakes for slowing and stopping. Number 16. What are the safety requirements when starting and running a power plant? One, use the correct checklist. Two, position the aircraft into the wind. Three, check the propeller blast area. Four, secure the external power card, and five, use a fire guard. Number 17, what are safety precautions taken when operating a drill press? One, wear eye protection and air protection. Two, secure the workpiece. Three, adjust the proper RPM. Four, Stop the machine completely before adjusting the workpiece. 5. Clean the area. Number 18. Why is a tire cage recommended when inflating aircraft tires? The answer is to prevent possible injury if the tire or the wheel should fail. And number 19. What type of fire can a CO2 extinguisher be used on? The answer is class A, B, and C fires. Section number seven, cleaning and corrosion. Question number one, what are the five common forms of corrosion? They are one, dissimilar metals, also known as galvanic corrosion, two, intergranular corrosion, three, surface corrosion, 4. Stress corrosion, 
and 5. Fretting. Number 2. Name at least 3 factors that influence corrosion. So, there are actually a few. Here are some of them. 1. Temperature. 2. The presence of electrolyte. 3. The type of metal. 4. The condition of the protective coating. 5. Moisture. And 6. Contaminants. Number 3. What are the two general conditions that may cause stress corrosion cracking? The answer is sustained tensile stresses and a corrosive environment. Number four, what is the cause of fretting corrosion? Fretting corrosion is caused by when two mating surfaces rub against each other. Number five, what is the principal cause of filiform corrosion? The answer is surfaces that have not been properly chemically treated prior to painting. Number six, where is intergranular corrosion most likely to occur? The answer is along the grain boundaries of extruded materials. Number seven, what is another name for dissimilar metal corrosion? Dissimilar metal corrosion is also known as galvanic corrosion. Number eight, what are the factors which affect the type or form of corrosion? The form of corrosion varies with atmospheric conditions, the size and shape of the metal, the type of metal, and the corrosion producing agents present. Number nine, what methods are used for removing rust from aircraft materials? Except for highly stressed steel surfaces like the oleo strut, the use of abrasive papers and compounds, small power buffers and buffing compounds, and hand wire brushes and steel wool are all acceptable methods. Number 10, what is an acceptable method for removing surface corrosion from titanium? Several methods may be used, including a stainless steel brush, aluminum oxide sandpaper, Scotch-Brite, abrasive blasting using glass beads, and hand polishing using aluminum polish and a soft cotton cloth. Number 11, what specific operations are part of corrosion preventive maintenance? The operations include adequate cleaning, periodic lubrication, detailed inspection, sealing, prompt corrosion treatment, touch-up of damaged paint, the use of protective covers, and the daily wipe down of exposed critical areas. Number 12, name the steps of corrosion removal. The steps are, first, clean and strip the corroded areas. Second, remove as much corrosion as possible. Third, neutralize any residual material remaining in the pits and crevices. And finally, restore any protective surface films and paints. Number 13, what tools are approved for cleaning corroded anodized surfaces? The answer is fiber bristle brushes, aluminum wool, and aluminum wire brushes. Number 14, what is used to keep corrosion from forming on aluminum alloy?
the answer is an oxide coating or aluminum cladding. Number 15. What can be used to repair an anodized surface of an aluminum alloy part? The answer is allodyne or other chemical corrosion coating. Number 16. What product should be used to clean an aircraft engine? The answer is a fine spray of kerosene or a recommended solvent. Number 17. What is the preferred cleaning agent for plastics and rubber surfaces? The answer is mild soap and water. Number 18. What should be used to clean grease, fuel, or oil from aircraft tires? The answer is soap and water. Number 19. Why should only recommended cleaners be used for aircraft fabrics and plastics? The answer is to reduce degradation of the material. Number 20. Name five areas of the aircraft that are more prone to corrosion. So, there are actually several. Feel free to memorize any five that you guys find the easiest. They are battery compartments, bilge areas, wheel wells, the landing gear, flap recesses, the lavatory, the galley, and various other areas where water might be entrapped. Number 21. What form of corrosion can be found in battery compartments? The answer is direct chemical corrosion. Number 22. Why are piano type hinges prime locations for corrosion? They are prime locations for corrosion for two reasons. One, piano hinges uses dissimilar metals, steel pins and aluminum hinges. And two, it also tends to trap contaminants between the pins and hinge surfaces. Number 23. What is used to neutralize a lead acid battery electrolyte? The answer is a solution of baking soda and water. Number 24. What is the difference between wet wash and dry wash aircraft cleaning? The answer is wet wash cleaning, which includes water and an agent, is used to remove oil, grease, carbon deposits, and soils, with the exception of corrosion and oxide films. Whereas dry wash cleaning, like when you use compressed air or a cloth, is used to remove film, dust, and small accumulations of dirt. Number 25. What are the type of light duty and heavy duty aircraft cleaning agents? Light duty cleaning agents include soap and synthetic detergents. Heavy duty cleaning agents include solvent and emulsion type cleaners. Number 26, what would you do before cleaning a windscreen? The answer is wet the surface before cleaning in order to prevent scratching. Number 27. What does filiform corrosion look like and where can it be found? Filiform corrosion looks like puffiness of a painted surface. It can be found between the metal surface and the protective coating. And number 28. 
How is the inside of structural tubing prevented from corroding? The answer is hot linseed oil, which can be poured into the hole, then the excess drained out. Section number eight, mathematics. Question number one, what is the formula for the area of a rectangle? The answer is the area is equal to the length times the width. Number two, what is pi? Pi is a constant, 3.14, and is the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of any circle. Number three, what is the formula for the area of a circle? The area of a circle is pi times r squared. Number four, what is the formula for the circumference to the diameter of any circle? The answer is circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. Number five, what is the formula for the volume of a cylinder? The volume of a cylinder is pi times r squared times height. Number six, what is the formula used for finding the volume of a rectangle? The volume of a rectangle is equal to length times width times height. Number seven, what is the root of a number? The root of a given number is a base number that when multiplied by itself one or more times will produce the given number. For example, the square root of 16 is 4. Number 8. Give examples of perfect square numbers. So, perfect square numbers are whole numbers that when you find the square root of it, it will give you another whole number. Examples are 4, 9, 25, 144, and so forth. Number 9. What is a squared number? A squared number is a number that is multiplied by itself. For example, 4 squared or 4 times 4 will give you 16. Number 10. How do you express a decimal as a percentage? The answer is, you will move the decimal two places to the right and add a percentage sign to it. Number 11, using the powers of 10, how may 1 million be expressed? It can be expressed as 10 to the sixth power. Number 12, what is scientific notation? Scientific notation is a way of representing very large or very small numbers using powers of 10. Number 13, what is the sum of a large negative number and a small positive number? The answer is a smaller negative number than the original. To do this, simply subtract the smaller number from the larger number, ignoring the signs. Then add the sign of the larger number, in this case, the negative. Number 14, how is a ratio expressed? A ratio may be expressed as a fraction, 
or it may be written using a colon as a symbol expressing a ratio. For example, 3 to 5 can be written as 3 over 5 or 3 to 5 using a colon. Number 15. What is a proportion? The answer is, a proportion is a ratio that describes a relationship between two objects of different dimensions. Number 16. How do you divide one fraction by another? To divide fractions, you simply cross multiply. Number 17. What is a right angle, an obtuse angle, and an acute angle? A right angle is an angle of 90 degrees, an obtuse angle is an angle greater than 90 degrees, and an acute angle is an angle less than 90 degrees. Number 18. What is a quadrant? A quadrant is a quarter of a circle. Number 19. What is a polygon? A polygon is a closed two-dimensional shape that is made up of three or more straight sides. Number 20. What is a parallelogram? The answer is a four-sided object with two parallel sides. Number 21. What is the hypotenuse of a triangle? In a right triangle, the hypotenuse is the long side that is opposite of the 90 degree angle. Number 22. What is a mixed number? A mixed number is a whole number followed by a fraction. For example, five and a half is a mixed number. And number 23. How can a decimal number be changed to a fraction? The answer is, you would multiply the decimal by the desired denominator. The result will give you the numerator of the new fraction. Section nine, maintenance forms and records. Number one, what is the definition of airworthy and where can it be found? The answer is, airworthy means the aircraft conforms to its type design and is in a condition for safe operation. The definition can be found in the Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Part 3. Number two, what is the definition of time in service with respect to maintenance time records? Time in service means the time from the moment the aircraft leaves the surface of the earth until it touches down again for landing. Pretty much, it's only the time that the aircraft is actually in the air. Number three. What are the record requirements after performing maintenance? The requirements are 1. A description of the work performed or a reference of data acceptable to administrator. 2. The date of completion of the work performed. 3 the name of the person performing the work, and four, the signature, certificate number, and the type of certificate the person approving the work holds. Number four, what are the record requirements after compliance with the 100-hour inspection?
The requirements are 1. The type of inspection and a brief description of it. 2. The date and aircraft total time. 3. Your signature, certificate number, and the kind of certificate held by the person approving or disapproving it. And 4. The I certified statement. Number 5. What are the record requirements after compliance with the Airworthiness Directive? The answer is 1. Method of compliance 2. The AD number and revision date 3. The time and date when the next action is required, if it's reoccurring and 4. Date, signature, and certificate number of the person approving the work Number 6. Where should the description of a major repair or major alteration be recorded? The answer is in the correct logbook and on a FAA Form 337. Number seven, what is the disposition of the two FAA Form 337s after they are completed? You must give one copy to the aircraft owner and one copy is sent to the FAA Flight Standards District office in Oklahoma City. Number eight, what regulations authorize a certified mechanic as an IA to approve or disapprove a major repair or alteration? The answer is 14 CFR 65.95. Number nine, who is required to make an entry in aircraft records after a hundred hour inspection has been performed? The answer is the appropriately rated and certified mechanic that performed the work. Number 10, how long must a record of a 100 hour inspection be retained by the owner or operator? The answer is until the work is repeated or superseded by other work or for one year after the 100 hour inspection has been performed. Number 11. Where can a mechanic find the required data for a 100 hour inspection maintenance record entry? It can be found in 14 CFR 43.11. Number 12. What is the minimal scope in detail that a checklist must contain when performing a 100 hour inspection? The answer is, it must include at least the items covered in Title 14, CFR 43, Appendix D. Number 13, where is a 100-hour inspection recorded? It is recorded in the maintenance records of the applicable equipment, such as airframe, engine, or power plant logbook. Number 14, when must an inspection entry contain the aircraft's total time? It must contain the aircraft's total time when an inspection entry or an AD entry is made. Number 15, when an aircraft is sold, what is done with the aircraft's records containing current status of airworthiness directives? The answer is, all records containing the status of ADs must be transferred to the owner at the time of sale. Number 16, what are the required entries in a new maintenance record for an engine that has been rebuilt and granted zero time by the manufacturer or by an agency approved by the manufacturer? The answer is 1. A signed statement with the date of the rebuild. 2. Each change made as required by ADs. 
3. Each change made in compliance with the manufacturer's service bulletin is specifically requested in the service bulletin. Number 17. Who may make a maintenance record entry for approval for return to service after progressive inspection is performed? The answer is an airframe repair station, inspection authorization, or the manufacturer. Number 18. What type of maintenance entry record is required when an inspection under 14 CFR 91.417 is made to a large airplane or a turbine engine powered multi-engine airplane and defects are found? The answer is, the entry must name the type of inspection, like continuous inspection, airworthiness inspection, and a signed and dated list of defects found must be given to the owner. Number 19, what is an AD summary? An AD summary is a list of airworthiness directives that pertain to a particular aircraft. Number 20. What are AD frequencies? An AD frequency is an update. They are issued bi-weekly. Number 21. Who is authorized to perform an annual inspection? The answer is an IA, someone holding an inspection authorization certificate. Number 22, can a certified AMP mechanic supervise an unlicensed person performing a 100 hour inspection? The answer is no. Only a certified AMP mechanic can perform a 100 hour inspection. Number 23. What is meant by a progressive inspection? The answer is. It's an approved type of inspection program that allows an annual or 100 hour inspection to be broken up into various scheduled inspections. Its purpose is to minimize the downtime of aircraft during inspection compared to performing an entire annual or an entire 100 hour inspection all at once. Number 24, who is authorized to rebuild and grant an aircraft engine zero time in maintenance records? The answer is only the manufacturer or an authorized representative of the manufacturer. And number 25, what is the ATA 100 system? The ATA 100 system is a numbering system designed to standardize technical data regardless of the manufacturer. Section number 10, physics. Question number one, what is matter? The answer is anything that has mass and occupies space. Number two, what are the different states of matter? The answer is solids, liquids, and gases. And some people consider plasma to be the fourth state of matter, so it's best to memorize that anyway. Number three, what are two types of fluids? The answer is 
liquids and gases. Now, a fluid is anything that flows. So both liquids and gases flow, which make them both fluids. Number four, when a fluid passes through the middle section of a venturi, what pressure and velocity changes occur? The answer is velocity will increase and pressure will decrease. Number five, are liquids compressible? The answer is no. Number six, what is standard atmospheric pressure at sea level? The answer is 14.7 PSI or 29.92 inches of mercury. Number seven, what is standard day temperature? Standard day temperature is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Number eight, what is the name of the atmospheric phenomenon where cool air is trapped near the earth by warm air? That phenomenon is called temperature inversion. Number nine, what is the speed of sound through air under standard sea level conditions? The answer is 761 miles an hour or 662 knots. Question number 10. What is meant by the density of air? Density is mass per unit volume. So the density of air is the mass of a given volume of air. Number 11, what determines the density of air? In other words, density altitude. It is determined by the temperature and pressure acting on it. Number 12, what does specific gravity mean? Specific gravity is a ratio of a substance density compared to the density of pure water or compared to the density of air if it's a gas. Number 13, what are the three basic parts of a lever? The answer is the fulcrum, the force of the effort, and the resistance. Number 14, what is a first class lever and give an example. The answer is a first class lever is when the fulcrum is located between the effort and the resistance. An example of this is a seesaw or a crowbar. Number 15. In what direction is force transmitted to a confined liquid? The answer is force is transmitted equally and undiminished in all directions. Number 16. What is the formula for computing force, pressure, and area? In other words, Pascal's law. Pascal's law is force is equal to area times pressure. Number 17, what is kinetic energy? The answer is kinetic energy is energy that is created from an object's motion. Number 18, what is potential energy?
Potential energy is energy stored in an object. This can be turned into kinetic energy. Number 19. What is absolute zero? The answer is, absolute zero is the coldest possible temperature at which all molecular movement stops. It is at negative 273 degrees Celsius or zero degrees Kelvin. Number 20, what are the two factors involved in work? The answer is force and distance. Work is equal to force times distance. Number 21. How is pressure expressed in hydraulics and pneumatics? Pressure is generally expressed in pounds per square inch, or PSI. Number 22. Name the forms of energy that can be converted into heat energy. The answers are mechanical, electrical, chemical, radiant, nuclear, and solar. Number 23, what are the three methods of heat transfer? The three methods are conduction, convection, and radiation. Number 24. What are the three types of friction? The three types of friction are rolling, sliding, and static. Number 25. What are the four forces experienced by an aircraft in flight? The answers are gravity, thrust, lift, and drag. Number 26. What is order rotation? The answer is, order rotation is when the helicopter rotor blades spin without engine power as air flows through the rotor. Number 27. How does blade flapping help compensate for the symmetry of lift in helicopter main rotor systems? The answer is, it does this by increasing the angle of attack on retreating blades and decreasing the angle of attack on advancing blades. Number 28. What is the name of the imaginary line that runs from the leading edge to the trailing edge of an airfoil. The answer is a cord line. Number 29. What function do wing mounted vortex generators serve? The answer is Vortex generators prevent airflow separation from the upper surface of the wing. And finally, number 30. What is directional stability? Directional stability is the ability of an aircraft to avoid yawing. Section 11. Maintenance Publications. Question number one. What is the purpose of airworthiness directives? The answer is, airworthiness directives, or ADs, are mandatory regulatory documents, which identifies unsafe conditions in aeronautical products and prescribes corrective actions. Number two. What FAA publication is used to notify aircraft owners of unsafe conditions?
The answer is airworthiness directives. Number three, when must airworthiness directives be complied with? All ADs must be complied with by the time given by the AD. Number four, when is the summary of ADs published? The answer is every other year. Number five, are ADs automatically issued to certified mechanics? The answer is no, they are issued to owners. Number six, where can you find a list of approved engines for use in a specific model aircraft? You can find this information in the Type Certificate Data Sheet or TCDS. Number seven, where can the dimensional tolerances be located for a wrist pin installed on an aircraft engine? The answer is in the overhaul manual for that engine. Number eight, where can the empty weight of an aircraft be located? The answer is in the aircraft's weight and balance records. Number nine, where can you find airworthiness standards for normal category airplanes? This can be found in 14 CFR 23. Number 10, where can you find airworthiness standards for transport category airplanes? This is found in 14 CFR 25. Number 11, what federal regulation defines the requirements for issuing of a type specific data sheet? The answer is 14 CFR 21. Number 12, where would you look to find out if a specific airplane can be certified in more than one category? This is found in the Type Certificate Data Sheet or TCDS. Number 13, what publication is issued by Airframe engine and component manufacturers to notify aircraft owners of design defects. The answer is service bulletins. The key words here is issued by the manufacturer. FAAs issue ADs, the manufacturers issue service bulletins. Number 14. What publication contains complete instructions for maintenance of all systems and components installed on the aircraft? That would be the manufacturer's aircraft maintenance manual. Number 15. What manual is prepared by the manufacturer for technicians who normally perform work on products, parts, and systems while installed on the aircraft? The answer is the Aircraft Maintenance Manual. Number 16. Who is responsible for ensuring that only the most current information is used when performing any maintenance on an aircraft? The answer is the person authorized to approve the maintenance. Number 17. What are FAA advisory circulars? They are non-regulatory FAA publications that expand upon and explain existing rules and regulations. 
Number 18. On older aircraft for which manuals are not available, what publication could be used to inspect and maintain the aircraft? The answer is AC4313. Number 19. Were not service bulletins considered mandatory? Service bulletins are mandatory only when they're referenced within an AD. Number 20. Are statements included in the Federal Aviation Regulations mandatory or optional to be complied with? They are mandatory. Number 21. When would you have to complete the FAA Form 337 in triple kit? The answer is when installing extended fuel range tanks in the baggage or passenger compartment. One of these will be given to the owner. One is sent to the FAA within 48 hours after the aircraft is approved to return to service. And one is placed on board the aircraft. Number 22. What is the purpose of the minimal equipment list or MEL? The MEL permits aircraft to be flown with inoperable, non-essential equipment long enough for repairs to be made. And number 23. At what way is an aircraft classified as large? The answer is at 12,500 pounds and above. Section number 12. Privileges and limitations. Question number one, which federal regulation prescribes certificate requirements for a mechanic? The answer is 14 CFR 65. Number two, what is the minimum age for an A&P mechanic certificate? The answer is 18 years. Number three, what are the two ratings that can be issued to a mechanic certificate? The answer is airframe and power plant. Number four, what are the limitations of a certified mechanic in regards to aircraft instruments? The answer is, a mechanic may not calibrate or make repairs or alterations to aircraft instruments. Number five, what are the privileges and limitations of a certified mechanic in regards to propellers? The answer is, a power plant mechanic may make minor repairs and alterations, but can't make major repairs or major alterations. Number six, what type of work may a certified mechanic accomplish on aircrafts? The answer is, they may perform or supervise maintenance, preventative maintenance, and alterations. Number seven, when a mechanic has a permanent change of address, what must be done within 30 days after the change? The answer is, they must notify the administrator of the FAA in writing or online at www.faa.gov. Number eight, what is the duration of a certified mechanic? The answer is, 
It is effective until surrendered, suspended, or revoked. Number 9. How long is a temporary mechanic certificate in effect? It's in effect for 120 days. Number 10. What is used as a guide to determine if a repair is a major or minor repair? The answer is 14 CFR 43, Appendix A. Number 11. What are the requirements of recent experience for a mechanic? A certified mechanic must supervise or perform maintenance for at least six months out of every 24 months. Number 12. What may be used as a guide for a 100-hour inspection? The answer is 14 CFR 43, Appendix D. Number 13. What are the privileges of a certified mechanic in regards to performing a 100-hour inspection and returning the aircraft to service? The answer is, a certified A&P mechanic may perform a 100-hour inspection and return the aircraft to service by making the proper entries in the maintenance records. Number 14. What are the privileges of a certified mechanic with respect to an annual inspection? The answer is, a certified AMP mechanic with an inspection authorization, or an IA, may perform an annual inspection. Number 15. Can an AMP supervise personnel without an AMP certificate in performing maintenance and slash or 100 hour inspections? The answer is an AMP may supervise maintenance, but an AMP cannot supervise a 100 hour inspection. Number 16. Who has final responsibility for maintaining aircraft maintenance records? The answer is the owner or operator of the aircraft. Number 17. May an airframe mechanic perform maintenance on engines? The answer is yes, under the supervision of a power plant mechanic. Number 18. What privileges are given to a power plant mechanic in addition to the ability to perform maintenance? The answer is they may perform a 100 hour inspection on a propeller or engine. And finally, number 19. What maintenance can a pilot perform and what are the limitations? The answer is, they may approve an aircraft for return to service after performing preventative maintenance, except on commercial aircrafts. That's it. Good luck on your exam. You got this.